If you could meet Taylor Swift again, what would you say to her? Obviously, I'm insanely thankful that I got to meet her at all, so don't think that I'm not. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lauren, if you're new here, happy Saturday. Hope you guys are having a lovely weekend. I'm so excited for this video. I've never done anything like this before on my channel. This is me trying to like test the waters. Um, This is a totally unscripted video. I'm going to go through and answer the questions that you guys sent to me. If you didn't already know, it has been about one year since my Look What You Made Me Do decoded video went viral. That's where a lot of you guys have found me and some of you found me even before then. And I'm just so grateful to those 17,000 people that have hit subscribe. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, do that. I actually weirdly get like 60% of my views from people that aren't subscribed and I'm like, Subscribe already, okay? That really helps me out and helps continue, I guess, this dream of mine to be on YouTube and to continue bringing you guys content. So make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And with that, welcome to my very first Q&A. You guys have been sending me your questions and they're all ranging from Taylor Swift to college to life advice and that makes me so very happy. So I'm just gonna jump right in. Happy anniversary, Lauren. Thanks, Samantha. Can you explain what happens when you go viral? Like, I think we all get what that means, but it'd be cool to hear a behind the scenes of how it happened how you found out. Yes, I would love to tell you this story. So last year, Labor Day weekend, I flew back to Denver for some of my best friend's wedding. So I posted it on Thursday and it started to do pretty well. I had 300 subscribers and I think it hit like a thousand views. And I was like, that is so cool. A thousand people like my video. Hell yeah, that's exciting. And then I flew home and it was such a strange thing because so if you didn't already know, Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays are the best days to post to YouTube because everyone's on the weekend and they have more time to watch. I was at my friend's wedding and it's so funny because they didn't have the greatest service up there. We were in Breckenridge for their wedding and I kept having to like really try hard to find Wi-Fi. I just remember being with all of like my closest friends back home and just being like, guys, my video hit 2000 views. And they're like, oh my God, Lauren, that's so cool, congrats. A few hours later, you guys, my video hit 5,000 views. What's going on? They're like, Lauren, that's crazy. And then it just continued to like exponentially climb. I think I just spit on the lens. Oops. So then after 5,000, it was just like, I kept getting into these dead spots where I didn't have Wi-Fi. And then like, I would scroll again and be like, your video is at 10,000 views. Your video is at 20,000, 50,000, 100,000. And like, I can't explain to you my excitement. Like it became this thing where all my friends throughout the week would be like, what's it at now? Like, has it passed 100? What about 200? And it was just the coolest thing in my life because I had only been posting on YouTube for, I mean like seriously, I had really only been posting consistently for like a few weeks. And it was actually due to one of my best friends here in California, Adrian Finch, who was like, you should do a reaction video to look what you made me do music video. You should react to it. And so I did that. That video started to do really well. And it was this thing where I kept looking on YouTube to be like, who is going to break down all the clues that I saw when I first watched it? No one did, so I was like, screw it. I'm gonna make a video where I go through all the clues. And it's just so cool that you all like really enjoyed that and watched it and then shared it with your friends and then YouTube recommended it. I guess a lot of people were searching for, look what you made me do, hidden meaning. Look what you made me do, music video explained. And my video like filled that void and that was just really cool. So that is what happened when I went viral. My video is currently at about half a million views. It still gets views every single day, which is just so cool. So that's my story of how I guess I went viral. Cool, next question. Did you meet any other celebrities at the Reputation Stadium Tour Pasadena show? I did. So that was a really cool day. If you haven't watched my Reputation Tour vlog and how I met Taylor Swift, make sure you go watch that video. Um, so because I got upgraded, Taylor Swift upgraded me so I was in Club Olivia. Club Olivia and Club Meredith are like the two VIP areas, I guess. I think there's like a celebrity VIP booth and then like a non-celebrity VIP booth. I was in the non-celebrity VIP booth, but because I was in that section, celebrities would come in sit down like literally right next to me, then tell their rep they felt like they were in the wrong booth and then like they were escorted out. But let me tell you the people that I saw. First person that I saw was Bob Saget. If you don't know who he is, he's an epic comedian. He's from Full House. He sat down with I believe his girlfriend or lady friend, whatever you want to call it. He sat down with me, was right to my left the entire show. He tapped on the shoulder and he goes, are these seats taken? And I go, no, go ahead. And so then I kind of look at him, I go, are you a big Taylor Swift fan? And he's like, yeah, I am actually. And then I like heard him say to his lady friend, you should offer them like a red vine. And it was just like a funny thing. And then as the pre-show happened and like my video reaction came up on screen, he saw me like film it, scream, freak out. And he was just kind of like, that's really cool. And I was like, thanks, Bob Saget. Ah! Cause it was this moment where like, we're in this booth. There were other rows of seats in front of us. And this, this little girl in front of us was like, 
that was you, right? Like, can I take a picture with you? And I'm like, you want a picture with me? <laughs> yeah, of course I'll give you a picture. So that was really cool. Um, and so then who else came by? Rebel Wilson came in, sat down, and then she moved. It was like this funny moment. I'm, I'm very like, I feel like I'm cool and collected around celebrities. Like, on the inside I may be freaking out, but like, I also want to like, treat them with respect obviously there's still people rebel wilson came in and like it was this thing where i didn't know who was in front of me there was just someone who walked by me and i had to like step back and i was just like and she goes hi and i was like hi and then i was like keep smiling keep smiling that's rebel wilson holy crap i'm a big big pitch perfect fan so that was like really cool for me and then spencer pratt and heidi pratt and gunner walked by it was right around this time when you guys were tweeting spencer being like you have to go on lauren's youtube channel spencer and i had been tweeting back and forth and so i walked to the edge of the booth as spencer's talking to security and i go hey and he goes oh hey and i was like and I walked away and I was just like, Spencer Pratt recognized me. That was really cool. I also still don't know if he actually recognized me, if he just like thought I was waving at him. Whatever. I'll believe what I want to believe. <laughs> that was just like a very cool show. If you could meet Taylor Swift again, what would you say to her? <sighs> if I could meet her again, I would ask her the silly questions that I wanted to ask her. I want to ask her what her favorite type of wine is, her favorite type of cheese, if she likes to like have girly wine nights. Like, I don't know why that's what I really want to know, but I just want to know. Like, I know that she like enjoys hanging out with her friends. I wonder what like her favorite drink is. I know that she's been singing about alcohol like more recently in Reputation, but guys, she's been drinking for a while now. She's 28. And that's just like something that I would love to know. Like, do you have like a go-to drink when you go to a bar? What do you like to order? What do you like to make at home with your friends? And I weirdly think that that is something that I would ask her. If not, what is your favorite song of Reputation? Because there's been like a lot of conflicting stories of fans being like, I met her, I asked her and she said this. So you never know what's real or not. And just, yeah, it would be really cool to meet her again and just have like a genuine interaction that wasn't in like a fan meetup meet and greet situation where I could like actually talk to her and not feel rushed. Obviously, I'm insanely thankful that I got to meet her at all. So don't think that I'm not. But yeah, I think I would just want to have like a more genuine interaction and just be like, how was your day? Like, are you stressed out or are you excited? Or like, what's going on in your life? Just because I'm like that. I like to connect with people in that sense. Okay, next question. I feel like I'm rambling. Question, what are your fears, your hopes, and dreams? Huh, that's a, that's a pretty loaded question there, C. Pearl. But um, I think my hopes and dreams are to live a happy, long life surrounded by love and family and friendship. I, don't, I know that sounds kind of cliche. Um, I live in LA and like, obviously I really love being on camera. I'm trained as an on-camera host. I used to work for Comcast as a host and that is really where I want my life to go. That's why I started a YouTube channel based on pop culture from a positive light. I want to continue to interview people. I want to continue to talk to people. I think that's my number one thing that I love to do in the world is going new places, meeting new people and like going on semester at sea for me did you guys know that i went on semester at sea by the way it's this like study abroad program in college where i lived on a ship for four months and went to 16 countries around the atlantic comment down below if you want me to do a video about my experience there because i have some pretty cool stories like how a shark slapped me in the face in cape town south africa anyways that was a side note i just really love to meet new people and connect with them and i feel like it would be my dream to host my own television show to continue to talk about current events and talk to people and learn about about things that they're doing. Uh, working for E! News would be like my dream job, whether or not I'm just like a writer and have to like work my way to the top, because I want to do that. It's just hard out here in LA. I don't really know anybody to help get my application viewed, because trust me, I've got a hosting reel, I got a resume. I always say like, if you meet me, you will love me. Like just try to see my personality. It really comes through on camera. And, and like I've said this before, but I feel like being on camera is the one thing in my life that I was really, really meant to do. And I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop being on camera. And if YouTube is my path, and if that is the way that I can continue to be on camera every single day for the rest of my life, then I'm here. I'm here for that. And that's why I'm trying to expand my content just a little bit. I will not be straying away from my Taylor Swift news. I know that that's why you all found me and I love that you guys love my Taylor Swift Tuesdays. I love them too. I love talking to you guys about your experiences with Taylor Swift and what she's done for your life. I'm just trying to test the waters and show you guys a little bit more of me and who I am. Hope that answers your questions. What was your favorite subject in school? Uh, okay, I didn't really like school. I'm not, I wasn't very good at it because I have ADHD. I'm kind of like all over the place and I didn't really respond well to an environment that's like, here's a chunk of book learn it and then be tested on it. I was never the greatest at that. What I was really good at was group projects, 
public speaking and writing. I was really good at all of those things. So I would always excel in writing and I would always like in college, we'd be in like group projects together. And everyone else would be like, all right, who wants to like present it to the class? And I'd be like, me, I'll present it to the class. I'll do this, I'll do that. Just because I clearly love public speaking and I feel like I'm good at like commanding attention in a room. Um, so I wouldn't really say, I don't really remember if I had a favorite subject in high school. Probably lunch, I don't know, socializing with my friends. In college, I really enjoyed um, a speech and gender class that I took. I went to CU Boulder in Colorado and I really enjoyed the speech and gender class. I really enjoy learning how many different words people ca can have for certain things and how different genders use different words and how words affect people. I just really enjoyed that class. But yeah, I'd love to know your favorite subject in school, so comment down below and let me know. I live in the Denver area and I'm planning on moving to LA. Yay, that's exciting. Are there any tips you have? Tips that I have for moving from Denver to LA. First, I would say save up as much money as you can because rent out here is insane, insane compared to Denver. I know that everyone's like, oh, rent in Denver is so expensive. No. I pay like $500 more than I paid in Denver here in LA. So definitely make sure you've got a good amount of money saved. If you're looking for a job out here, I would say it's a lot easier to move here first and then get a job just because it's all about people that you know. You never know. Your random roommate that you meet could have a job here and their friends could. I found that that was easier for me. And to just have an open mind, it's a really different world out here in LA. Some people aren't as friendly as they are in Denver. I feel like everyone in Colorado is just so friendly and nice and willing to help and LA can be a different place. There are definitely incredible people out here, people willing to help you, but just move out here with an open mind, thick skin, and some money in your bank account. <laughs> hey Lauren, school starts soon, so that means anxiety season for me. What do you do when you feel overwhelmed with everything? It's a great question. I really appreciate you asking me that, Sarah. I get overwhelmed a lot, <laughs> especially now that I'm here away from my family and friends and my support system. When I'm feeling overwhelmed, I try to exercise. I love to go on runs. Um, now that I just joined a gym, I love to go to the gym. I love doing yoga. I've been a member of Core Power for like eight years or something crazy like that. I only recently canceled my membership so that I could join a gym. One of the things that I love doing when I'm overwhelmed or when I'm sad or when I have anxiety is take a bath. I love bubble bath. Unfortunately, my current house where I live, I don't have a bathtub anymore and it's so sad, but there's nothing that I enjoy more than like getting into a bathtub, reading a book, having a glass of wine and like just chilling hard and like a face mask maybe. Those things really, really calm me down. Um, I've also been trying to meditate a lot more. It really, really helps with grounding myself and kind of pushing the chatter away from my brain. Um, that can happen with me a lot where my brain will just be running, 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 running and I'm like, I, I can't get it to stop, like what do I do? Another thing that really helps me is just hanging out with my friends, having a good conversation with them, watching a movie. Just, I'm such an extrovert that when I'm around other people, that's how I like like mentally recharge. I need to like be around people in order for me to relax. That's how I deal with my anxiety or just like look up videos of puppies because that will always make you feel better, I promise. What will you do if you hit 100,000 subscribers next year? Do you have any big plans? Um, if I were to hit 100,000 subscribers next year, which is like, you know, I'm just, I'm never gonna rule anything out. I actually just created a vision board and on it, it says my name and it says 500,000 subscribers because I feel like anything is possible if I just really work hard, put my mind to it. And like, I'm a big proponent of visualization. If I can see it happening and it's on the tip of my brain every single day, then it's possible. And I really hope that that does happen. If that happens next year, holy crap, that would be incredible. Um, I would expand Lauren Lippman as a brand. I would try to, I don't know, it's hard because I don't know where I'll be like mentally on my channel at that state. Um, I want to continue to just make great content, thought-provoking content, um, things that people care about. I, I really like presenting the celebrity news to you in ways that you understand. I also I love giving you the facts while also giving my opinion. So I guess just like continue to do that and collaborate with other YouTube creators that really inspire me. I think that would be incredible. I really would love to do weekly collaborations or monthly collaborations with other creators that I look up to. Thanks for the question, good question. Good day, mate. I've got a question. What's your favorite country other than America? Great question. I feel like I should do a video on my semester at sea because that was insane. On semester at sea, I went to 16 countries around the Atlantic Ocean. I couldn't just choose one, so I have to give you my four favorite countries in the whole world right now. I loved going to Ireland, South Africa, Cuba, and Morocco. All for different reasons. Um, I think Ireland is at the top for me because 
<sighs> Everything there is just gorgeous. Everyone who lives there is just so friendly. I also picked up the Irish accent really well. Because if you're American, they just want to talk to you all day, have a pint of beer, and just talk to you about your life. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed that accent. But seriously, it's just so beautiful there. I spent time in Dublin and Galway, and it's just an incredible country. Like, people would open up their homes to us just to cook. They would literally change their plans, be like, come have a home-cooked meal, and we'll chat with you. And I, I played guitar with some incredible locals, and I just really loved Ireland. I loved Cuba. I loved being able to experience Havana and be there, walk around. Morocco, I spent time in Marrakesh, and also some time in a beach town called Ualidia. Beautiful place, loved being there. And South Africa just holds like a special place in my heart. I had such a blast there. Yeah, I have some very heartwarming memories there of being in Lion Hill, of climbing Table Mountain. I, I just had an incredible time in all those places and I want to travel more. I'm just not fiscally there in my life to be able to fund it, but one day I will be traveling again because I really want to go to Australia. I'm dying to go to Australia and Asia. I'm dying to go to Thailand, Bali. I'd love to go to all those places. Question, what's your zodiac sign? Good question. I'm an Aries. I feel like I'm very true to my sign. Aries are known to be very stubborn, passionate, outgoing. I am all of those things. I'm definitely an Aries, like, to the T. Was it hard to leave your hometown for LA? Yes. It's probably one of the hardest things I've ever gone through in my life. Um, I am very blessed with an incredible family and incredible friends. Like, oh, I miss them so much every single day. I have incredible friends back there. Like, I'm talking two huge, huge groups of friends that support me and love me. And we're still all so close, even though I live very far away. And I just, I something didn't feel right when I was in Denver. I worked a nine to five job. I did really cool digital media project management and something about the nine nine to five lifestyle didn't click with me. Most, if not all of my friends had nine to five jobs and they were seemed to be, from at least my perspective, okay with just enjoying their nights and weekends, regardless of if they actually liked their jobs or not. Because we had such an incredible friend group and things to do on the weekends, we'd have happy hours on Wednesdays, we do trivia on Thursdays, we do brunch on Sundays, like we had an incredible social calendar. I really have just always wanted to be on camera my whole life. I didn't even want to go to college because I wanted to move to LA and my mom was like, no, you're going to college, Lauren. Sorry, that's non-negotiable. And I'm glad that I did. I'm so happy that I went to college. I feel like I learned so many like life skills from college as opposed to like class skills and I don't regret that for a second but I, I just kept wandering around being like no one that I'm surrounded with wants to do the things I want to do. I want to start a YouTube channel. I don't know anyone out here that wants to do that. I pull out a camera. None of my friends are really interested and I just it didn't really feel right. I feel like I had to like give myself this chance and at least try because I would regret it my entire life if I didn't try it and it was really tough to move. An opportunity came for me to move to California and it lined up perfectly with my timeline and things that I wanted to do so I moved to California and it was it was really tough. It was really tough for a lot of reasons and even though I still struggle a lot with getting adjusted, I'm, I'm about a year here in LA, almost two years in California because I moved to Orange County first and then I moved to LA and I still feel like I'm getting adjusted. Every single day is something new, some days are easier than others. Some days are a lot harder than others, but I don't regret it one bit. I feel like I have so much unfinished business here in LA and just things to accomplish. Hey Lauren, what good advice could you give to a college student if they want to follow their dreams? I love this kind of question. My advice to you is if that is a dream that you've had for a while or if it's a new dream, but if it's something that you feel like you can do, then go for it. Take little steps every single day to push towards your dreams, no matter what that is. If it's going to med school, if your dream requires you to go to college, go to college, get your degree, because trust me, having a college degree when you're applying for jobs, just, it is huge. If your job doesn't require it, that's, that's a gray area, and I don't know if I can advise you one way or the other. Even though my dream job didn't require a college degree, for me and my situation and my parents, I knew that I had to go to college and I had to graduate and that was like a part of my plan. But even then in college, I did little steps to do things to get me more comfortable to be on camera. I got my first on-camera hosting job in Colorado for Comcast. Before that, I would approach music festivals and artisan festivals, food festivals and be like, hi, do you need a host? Do you want someone to go interview the vendors? Just anything that I could do to build a hosting reel so that when I eventually moved out to LA, I could be prepared, have some stuff under my belt and not just show up in LA being like, all right, I'm brand new because that can be a tough spot to be in. My advice to anyone wanting to follow their dreams is to take steps every single day towards that dream because please excuse the cliche, but if you can dream it, you can do it. I 
solely believe in that. Always go for your dreams. Definitely always, always go for your dreams, but be responsible about it. <laughs> and then I'll end my video on a Taylor Swift question. What was the first song that you heard from Taylor? Did you become a fan immediately? I want to say the first song that I really remember hearing of hers was our song. Um, a, a girlfriend of mine in high school was like, you have to hear this song. And I was like, What's the song? Oh, it's country. I don't really think I'm gonna like it. I don't really like country music. And then I listened to it and I was like, oh, this is really good. It's, it's a cross between country and pop. And it's definitely a country song and a country album. You hear the banjo, you hear the fiddle. But then she's got like this like upbeat catchiness to it. Like I was riding shotgun with my hair undone. And I was just kind of like, oh, I really like, like this. And then I think after I heard our song, I started to listen to Tim McGraw. And then that whole album was just like, I think like I really loved that entire album because Mary's song, My My My, was like my favorite song. I love that song. I think those lyrics are so sweet, it's so romantic, and you know, like who doesn't want like a love story like starting at like age six or whatever. I'm trying to think, I'm looking at her album songs. Like I think it started with our song, Mary's song, Tim McGraw and Teardrops on my guitar. Those are the ones that kind of were like sucked me in a lot and I was like, okay, who is this Taylor Swift chick with the curly hair? I am so into it, like she's so cute. And what really like started my love for Taylor Swift was following her on MySpace. She would do vlogs on MySpace. She'd turn the camera around and be like, hey guys, I'm here on tour. And you can like still find those videos online. It's so amazing to watch. I love that Taylor Swift grew up in the same era that I did. I'm like a year younger than her. And I love being able to follow her all throughout this stuff because even from the beginning, Taylor Swift has been all about her fans, interacting with her fans. She's been so sweet. I love that. I love that so much. All right, guys, this has been a really long video, but I hope that you enjoyed this q and I truly enjoyed doing it. I wonder if you want me to do videos like this like monthly would you be interested in like seeing me try on clothes or like would you ever be interested in like doing like chitty chat get ready with me like how I did like my eyes today and my makeup would you want to see stuff like that from me because I love showing you guys more of who I am and if that's something you want to see comment down below let me know I love connecting with you all all right guys I hope you guys have an incredible Saturday an incredible weekend and make sure you subscribe to my channel and please leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys guys next time. Bye!